Hi, my name is Alistair Lee. In this video, I'm going to take a look at Adobe Connect Recordings. Adobe Connect Recordings are associated with the meetings that you've used to create the recording. And so to view or distribute any of the recordings that you've made, the first step is to head over to the Meetings tab in Adobe Connect Central, and then click on the Meeting Room that you use to create the recording. Once you've got the Meeting Room, you'll notice a tab called Recordings, and I can click on that to view all of the different recordings that I've associated with this Meeting Room. Now, since Adobe Connect meeting rooms are persistent, you may have more than one recording associated with that meeting room. You can see in my case, for my personal meeting room, I've got literally pages of different recordings that I've created with this specific meeting room. Now, I can click on any one of these recordings to get more information. So let me just go ahead and click on the first one here. Um, and you'll notice right away I've got a URL for viewing. And this URL can be sent out to anybody so that they can view the recording. Now, by default, a meeting recording takes on the same permissions as the meeting itself. So anybody who's been invited to my meeting room will be able to view this recording. But if they're not on that invitee list, they may not be able to view it, depending on how my room settings are set up. So if I want to change that, if I want to make sure that everybody can view this recording, I can simply click on one or more of the different recordings I've got in my recordings folder, and then click on the Make Public button. And that'll make sure that anybody with a link is able to view the recording. I can do the opposite if I want to make it private. I can click on the Make Private button, and any of the selected recordings will become private. Now, if you want even more granular permissions on a specific recording, you can actually do that by moving the recording to your content library. And that way, you can manage it as you would any other piece of content in Adobe Connect, meaning that you can set the permissions for specific groups of people or specific individuals. I'm pretty happy with this recording that I've made public, though. I'm going to click on the recording itself to see what else I can do with it. Now, because I've made some edits to this recording in the past, I've got a button to view the original version of the recording. I can make an offline copy. This will create a video file on my desktop that I can then view when I'm not online. And I can edit the recording. And that's what I want to do right now is click on this Edit Recording button. That's going to open up the recording in my browser the same way it would for somebody viewing the recording. But since I've clicked the Edit button, I'm going to have a few more options. i you the link after we're done. If you... I'm just going to pause this recording right away because the sound will come through to this recording as well. Uh, the first thing I do want to point out, though, is that these recordings, when viewed online, are still interactive. So I can still copy and paste text. Uh, I can even still play this rock, paper, scissors game that I had in my original meeting. These controls are, are still all interactive. And that means if there was a file download pod, for example, later in this meeting, I'd still be able to download the files from that file download pod, even though I'm watching the recording. The other thing that you'll notice is to the left of my recording, there's an index that's been opened. And this index uh, shows me every single slide that was used in the presentation that was delivered during this original meeting. So Adobe Connect automatically indexes every time I changed the layout. So you can see here we've got the main index of screen share, Q&A, PowerPoint. These are the different layouts that I used in my original meeting. And then each of the different slides that I navigated to in the original meeting are also indexed. And this makes it very easy to search for something like mobile and find specifically the content related to that particular topic. And I can include in my index things like slide changes, the chat messages, even the camera. All of that gets completely tracked. If I want to close that index, I can use this little arrow on the left-hand side, and that'll show me a, a larger view of my recording. I'm going to open that index back up, though, because I do want to come back to it. Now, we clicked on the Edit Recording button, and that gives us not only the ability to view this recording, but also to make some edits to it, obviously. And I can edit this recording in a few different ways. First, I can actually chop sections out of the recording itself. If it took us a few minutes to get going, and I want to remove the first few minutes of the recording, I can simply use these little markers down in my timeline to identify the parts of the recording that I want to eliminate. Uh, I can scrub the play bar back and forth to see when we actually started the, the main content. This looks like a pretty good position right here. So I'm going to move the marker to my, my main content and then chop out that red section. Basically cuts it out of the recording. Now remember, I've always got the button to revert back to the original uh, recording. So this is not something that I'm permanently losing. This is just going to be cutting it out of the version that I distribute to anybody. And this doesn't have to be right at the start either. I can scrub right into the meeting. If we took a break and I want to cut that out, I can move the markers 
the in and out markers to the middle of the recording, for example, and chop out a section right in the middle. And maybe we took some questions at the end that I want to get rid of. I can do the same thing at any point in the meeting. I can go and eliminate sections of the recording that I don't want included in that final version. So you can see here, Adobe Connect keeps track of places that we've eliminated parts of the timeline by showing those as red. Once I hit the save button, those red marks will go away and we'll have a new version of the recording with a different time because we've actually cut parts out of it. I can not only edit the timeline though, I can actually start editing the content inside of the meeting itself. And that's uh, something that I can do through the settings button here on the bottom left hand side of the edit screen. I'm going to go ahead and click that. These are actually new features that were introduced with Adobe Connect 9, giving me the ability to anonymize the meeting. So if I go ahead and hide the names of the attendees during playback, which I'll go ahead and do, and then press done, you'll notice that the attendees in the attendee list are now anonymized. Instead of giving their real names, it just says user one and user two. And anywhere that those names may have showed up, like a chat pod, for example, or a Q&A pod, all of those names have been completely anonymized. So we could still keep the chat and the Q&A, but have anonymous users rather than specific user identities. Now, because it doesn't make much sense for me to have an attendees pod inside of an anonymous recording, I'm going to go ahead and click on the settings button and choose to actually hide that pod altogether. I can hide the attendees pod. And in fact, there wasn't much chat. I'm going to hide the chat pod as well and click done. And you'll see that those pods are completely removed from the recording themselves. They don't even show up. So we can not only anonymize those meeting recordings, but we can remove content from the recording itself. So those are two ways of editing the recording. We can edit the timeline. We can anonymize the users or edit the number of pods that actually existed uh, or actually exist in that recording. There is a third way to make edits, and that's by editing the index that was created. Now, I didn't have to create this index. This is something that Adobe Connect created for me automatically. Again, every time I moved from the one layout to another layout, it created an index entry here. And every time I moved from one slide to another, let me just get rid of my search term here you'll see that it indexed every slide title that I uploaded to Adobe Connect. If we want to edit or even delete some of these entries, we can do so just by clicking on the uh, hammer and or screwdriver and spanner icon down here. And now when I click on one of these indexes, I've got the option to edit it. If I want to edit the name of this, this is actually my screen share layout, but I was using it to show my presentation. So I actually want to name this presentation and hit save and you'll notice that that edits the index entry. So it makes a little more sense now for somebody viewing this recording. I can edit even these different slide entries. This is particularly handy if you use slides with massive graphics on and you didn't include a title on the PowerPoint slide at all. It'll just say untitled slide or slide 15. So now you can click on that, hit edit, and actually create your own chapter marker. You may have noticed another option there. As I clicked on one of these uh, individual slides, I've got the ability to add my own chapter markers. So if there was something else happening, um, or if I want to create a subset, as we move from presentation, we were actually talking about the competition in this section. So I want to create a brand new uh, chapter marker called competition. There we go. And now I've got a large uh, index. So I've split up my presentation into presentation and then specifically talking about competition, for example. If I want, in addition to be, being able to add entries into my index, I can also add bookmarks. And I can tell Adobe Connect where I want that bookmark to start. It's automatically going to pick up the marker that I've got in my timeline, which is right now set at 3 minutes and 54 seconds. But if I've got a specific time I'd like to include there, maybe it's 7 minutes and 54 seconds, I can create a bookmark at whatever time I'd like. And this is maybe when I started doing the demo. So I'm going to create a bookmark specifically to my demo. And you can see there's a new bookmark icon that's been entered into my index. Once I've finished making those edits, I can click on the wrench and screwdriver. Uh, and my index is now saved. I'm happy with this now. I've, I've edited the timeline, I've edited the pods, and I've edited my index. I'm going to click on the Save button. And this is going to save a new copy of the recording. If I've already sent out the URL for the, the recording before I made these edits, I don't have to worry. Somebody who clicks on that URL will now be brought to this new version. I don't have to send out a different URL. 
Adobe Connect now is done saving this. It's relaunching the meeting recording back in my edit mode. It'll have a new timeline with the sections that I cut out already removed. And it'll have a new index based on the changes I made when I was editing the recording. I'm going to go ahead and close that down before it starts uh, overlaying audio on top of this video. Uh, and hopefully you enjoyed this short video on Adobe Connect Recordings. Thanks for your time.